Prompting and prompt engineering are easily the most in-demand skills of 2023. The rapid growth of large language models, or LLMs, has only seen an emergence of this new discipline of AI called prompt engineering. In this video, let's take a brief look at what prompting is, what prompt engineers do, What exactly is a prompt? Prompt is simply the input that you provide to a trained model. When I say trained model, the weights of the model are fixed or frozen and are not going to change during the prompting process. You may now ask, how is it different from inference? Because we have been running trained models, deploying them and running inference on machine learning models. The point is that with inference, the input is fixed. We never ever change it and whatever the model gives as output, we accept it as the result. Think of image classification as an example task. However, with prompting, you are not restricted to a single input. You can tweak the input to your needs to improve the model's behavior. You are more of instructing the model with the intention to steer it to the right answer. When you accept the model for given, when it comes to inference, with prompting, you're studying the capabilities and limitations of the model. The art of designing or engineering these inputs to suit the problem on hand so as to serve you best gives birth to a fairly new discipline called prompt engineering. In order to engineer or design the prompts, we have to understand the different elements of a prompt. A prompt can contain any one or more of the following elements. Prompts can be instructions where you ask the model to do something. In our example, we provide a huge body of text and ask the model to summarize it. Prompts can optionally include a context for the model to better serve you. For example, if you have questions about, say, English heritage sites, I can first provide a context like English heritage site cast for over 400 historic monuments, blah, 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 and ask question as what is the largest English heritage site? As part of the prompt, you can also instruct on the format in which you wish to see the output. And so, a prompt can optionally have an output indicator. For example, you can ask, I want a list of all the English heritage sites in England, their location and their speciality. I want the results in tabular format. Or if you want even better response, you can enter the desired format with this syntax to indicate you wish to see columns and rows in the output. A prompt can include one or more input data where we provide example inputs for what is expected from the model. In this case, sentiment classification, take a look at this prompt where we start providing examples to show our intentions and also specify we don't want any explanation in the response. So we can start with the instruction, classify the below text into positive or negative sentiment and provide examples. This way of giving examples in the prompt is similar to how we explain to humans by showing examples. In the prompting world, it's called few shot prompting. We provide high quality examples having both the input and the output of the task. This way, the model understands what you are after and so responds far better. Expanding on our example, if you want to know the sentiment of a passage, instead of just asking what is the sentiment of the passage, I can provide a few examples covering the possible classes in the output, in this case, positive and negative. And I can then leave the model to respond to the last text I entered. 
Typically, five to eight examples should be good enough for few shot prompting. As you can guess by now, the drawback of this approach is that there are too many tokens that will get used when you want to give a lot of examples as input. If you wish to start simple, you need not provide any examples, but jump straight to the problem like this prompt. This is zero shot prompting where you don't provide any examples, but still expect the model to answer you properly. Typically, while prompting, you start with zero shots as it's simpler, and based on the response, you move to few shots by providing examples to get better results. If you wish to jump to a specialized topic with the LLM, you can straight away steer it to be an expert in any field by assigning it a role, and this is called role prompting. You would typically start the prompt with the expert role the LLM has to play, then follow with the instructions for what it needs to do. As a simple example, the role could be asking the LLM to be a poet, and the instruction could be to write a poem about AI bytes, or it could be slightly more complicated by asking the LLM to act as a Linux terminal and providing specific instructions to say, copy the first 10 lines of a file into a different file and to save it. You can even prevent it from including any other text in the output by explicitly mentioning not to give any explanations. With all that said, if you want me to formalize the structure of a prompt, I would go about like this. A prompt typically starts with a role, which the model has to play if you prompt it about a specialized topic. Then it can have any instructions you would like to give the LLM. On top of that, if you wish to provide additional information to the LLM, it can also go after the instructions. Soon after that, it can provide high quality examples if you're doing few shot prompting. Now these examples can then be followed by any context you wish to provide to the model. If you wish to ask any questions and do a Q&A task, you can include your questions as well in the end. Now that we have seen what constitutes a prompt, it's even better if we know how to format these prompts. For example, it's better to explicitly mention desired format and then actually provide the format. Similarly, for input or context, it's better to say input followed by a colon and then provide your input. When providing examples, it's better to separate them with a couple of hashes, like in this example. If you're providing input, you may wrap it in quotes like this example. Then there's something called the stop sequence, which hints the model to stop churning out text because it's finished with the output. You may choose to stop sequence with any symbol of your choice, but new line seems to be the usual option here. If you're working with say code generation, it's better to provide comments according to the language you wish to see the output code to be generated in. Now, with all that introduction about prompts, prompt engineering, and their types, we have only scratched the surface here. For example, how can we ask the LLM to reason about a given situation? So there are more advanced ways to prompt like chain of thought, self-consistency, general knowledge, etc. If you stay tuned, I'm going to literally continue this video series with those prompting techniques. So I'll see you in my next one then. Bye.